In this Blender tutorial, we're gonna be creating this procedural dry cracked ground material. Now real quick before we start, if you'd like to help support me and this channel and also get the project files for this tutorial, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store, the link will be in the description. And also if you join my Patreon over on my Patreon page, then you can get the project files as well. And one last thing before we start, I want to give a huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Sketchfab is an awesome 3D model site where you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can even view them on a phone, tablet, or in AR and VR. They also have a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can even apply to sell your own models on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. All right, so this is the procedural material that we're gonna be creating for the procedural dry cracked ground. Now, while we're creating the material setup, I am gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can just click right here on edit and then go to the preferences. And then just click right over here on the add-ons and over on the search here, you can just start to type in Node and then just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. It's a really useful add-on, it's built into Blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. All right, and then I'll also show you the setup that I have if you wanna do the same thing that I'm doing. So I just pressed Shift A and I added an Icosphere and then right behind me, those add Icosphere sphere settings I just turned the subdivisions up so that it was very detailed and then I shaded the object smooth so this is my subdivided icosphere and then I just added a camera and pointed it right at the sphere and then also to help me get very realistic lighting I added in this brick factory 01 1k HDRI and this is from polyhaven.com so the link will be in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using and it just helps to get some very realistic lighting for our procedural material all right so let's actually get started so I just have the 3D view over here and then I have the shader nodes right here. So I'm just going to click on new. So here is our principled BSDF. This is going to be the base for our material. Let's first start by adding a noise texture. So I'm going to press shift A and then I'm going to search for a noise texture and this is going to be the base for our color. Now I also want to press shift A and I want to search for a texture coordinate. So here is the texture coordinate node. I'm just going to drop this right down here and then I'm going to plug the object up to the vector on the the texture coordinate and then also using the feature from the node wrangler we turn the node wrangler add-on on so i can hold down the control and shift key and then click on the node and that's going to preview the node so the node wrangler is a really useful add-on for previewing the nodes so back to the texture coordinate i use the object mapping because that places the noise texture around the object more evenly and it's also great for putting the material on different objects all right, so let's configure the noise texture. So let's turn the scale up to six so that it's a little bit more detailed. And then I'll turn this detail all the way up to 16 so it has a lot more detail. And then I'll also turn the roughness up to a 0.65 so it has a little bit more roughness and more detail as well. All right, and then we can plug the factor up to the base color. And then again, using the node wrangler, I can hold down the control and shift key and click on the principal BSDF to preview it. Now that doesn't look anything like dirt because it's just white and black so I'm going to press shift A and search for a color ramp node we're going to drop the color ramp node right in here so now we can change the tabs in between this and it's going to change the color so that when it goes into the base color it'll actually look like dirt so I'm going to leave the black one right where it is and then the white one I'm going to make this a light brown color and if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using you can click over on the hex value and you can punch in CC B180. So that is the light brown that I'm going to be using. And then let's also click on the plus here and that's going to add a new tab. And then this one, I'm going to make a darker brown color. And again, if you'd like to use the exact same color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can type in 955E. 2F. And then also I'm just going to bring it back just a little bit so you can see a little bit more of the light brown. Now I also want to add some little dots and I want to add that into the color as well as the normal to make it look like there's some pebbles and things like that. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. I'm just gonna drop the Voronoi texture right underneath the noise texture, and then I wanna plug the object up to the vector, and then we can control, shift, and click on the Voronoi texture to preview it. Now the scale, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 50, so that there are a lot of dots. And then also on the F1 here, I'm gonna change this to smooth F1 so that the dots look a bit better. 
Now I wanna make the dots more contrasty, so to do that I'm gonna press Shift A, and we can just search for a color ramp node. I'll just drop the color ramp node right here. And then if we start to drag these out, it's going to make the dots more contrasty. So I'm just gonna bring the black one out a little bit and then also bring the white one in a lot. And now if you zoom in here, you can see that those dots are very contrasty. So now I want to add these dots in with the base color. To do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a mix RGB so that we can mix these in with the color. And then I can also control Shift and click on the mix RGB. All right. Right, so I'm going to put the bottom color ramp into the factor and then I'm going to take the base color and put that into color two. And then if you control shift and click on the mix, you can see that now it's adding those dots on top and they are white. Now color one, if you change that, that's going to be the color of the dot. So I'm going to make the dots a little bit darker brown color, and if you want to use the same hex value that I'm using, I'm going to be using a hex value of 855126, so just a little bit darker brown. And then I can control shift and click on the principle, and we can see that. All right, now I also want those dots to be contributing to the normal to make it look like they're bumping out a little bit. So I'm going to press shift A, and I'm going to search for the bump node, and I'm just going to drop it right down here, and then I'm going to plug the normal up to the normal on the principled. So now I can plug the color from this color ramp up to the height and then I can control shift and click on this and you can preview it or just click on the principled BSDF and you can see that it's bumping in those dots. Now I actually don't want it to be going in. I want the dots to be popping out. So I'm going to click on the invert button and now the dots are going to be popping out. And then they are a little bit strong right now. So I'm going to change the strength down to like a 0.31 and then they're still there but they're a bit less strong. And then I also want the noise texture to be contributing to the bump as well. So I'm gonna press Shift D and duplicate the bump and just drop the bump right down here. Now I need to switch these around because I want this bump to be going through the normal and that way we can add multiple bumps together. And then I'm gonna plug the color ramp up to the second one here, so on the height. So the height is going to just convert any data into normal data. So now we have this second bump here and I'm gonna take the color ramp up here, this color ramp and I'm going to plug that up to the height and now you can see that it's adding in all that detail from the noise texture and then I do want it to be a little bit more strong so on the strength here I'm going to turn this one up to like a 0.57 so it's quite a bit stronger and then I'm also going to turn off the invert on this first one the one that the uh, noise texture is going through because I don't want it to be inverted all right so there we go you can see it's already starting to look pretty cool it's looking like some dry ground and it is pretty detailed but I want to add another small layer of detail. So I'm going to press Shift A, and again, I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. I'm just going to drop the Voronoi texture right down there. And then the object, again, I'm going to plug that up to the vector. So I can now Control, Shift, and click on it to preview it. Now again, this one I want to change to Smooth F1 so that it has a bunch of dots. And then I'm going to turn the scale up really high to like a 250. So now if you zoom in here, you can see there's all these super tiny little dots. And then again, I want to make them contrasty, kind of like this one. So this color ramp here, I'm going to press Shift D and duplicate it and just drop it right down here. But then I do want to be able to see the dots a little bit better. So I'm going to pull the white out a bit and then pull the black in a bit, just so that they're a little bit more in the center. So something like that is pretty good. And you can now see if you zoom way in, there's just a bunch of tiny little dots. So I'm going to use this to add even more detail to our bump. So I'm gonna click on this bump and then I'll press Shift T to duplicate it and just drop it down here. And then we just want the normal to be going through the normal. So now we have this extra height value. So what we can do is we can plug the color up to the height and then also the invert I'm going to turn that off again so I can now control shift and click on this to preview the entire thing and also control shift and click on the final thing and you can see if you zoom way in here it's just giving a tiny little bit more detail and then I think I'll turn the strength down to like a 0.28 just so that it's slightly less strong so it is very subtle but you can especially see it if you control shift and click on the bump there's just a bunch of tiny little dots right there all right so now I want to add some little chunks and things um, around the dirt so I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for another Voronoi texture and just drop it right down here. And then again, the object is going to go into the vector and then I can control shift and click on this. Now I actually want to distort this texture. So I'm going to press shift A and search for a noise texture and I'll drop the noise texture right here, right in front of this one. And so you can see that the noise texture is going through the vector. And so it's actually going to distort how the Voronoi texture is placed on the object. And you can see that it's clearly 
taking effect. So I'm going to turn the scale on the noise texture to like a 3.6, and I'll turn the detail all the way up to 16 so it's very detailed. And I'll turn the roughness down just a little bit to like a 0.48. Now on the Voronoi texture, I want to click on the F1, and I want to change that to Distance to Edge, and now you can see we have those little cracks and things. Now I don't want this to be everywhere, I just want it to be some places, so I'm going to control the contrast with a color ramp. So I'll press Shift D on this color ramp, just drop the color ramp right down here, and you can see it's already kind of doing what I want, but I want to switch these values so that it's mostly white. And then I'll just drag the black tab way out here so that it's uh, pretty subtle, and then I'll drag the white out a little bit as well. So if you look around here, you can see there's just some little gray areas in little patches, and I'm going to use that to kind of look like chunks coming out of the ground. So I'm going to select this bump node right here, the one in the middle, and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and drop it right in here. So now there are four of them. And then again, I will turn off the invert. So now we can just add this one in. So I'm going to take the color and plug that into the height, and then I can control Shift and click on all these to preview them. And then I do want this one to be a bit stronger. So on the strength here, I'm going to turn this up to like a 0.6. Eight, so it's quite a bit stronger and now you can really start to see those so if I control shift and click on the final material you can see there's all these little chunks and things coming out of the ground all right so let's just do the last layer of detail I want to add those cracks in the texture so on this Voronoi texture and this noise texture I'm just gonna shift select both of them and then I'll press shift D to duplicate them and drop them down here and then again the object, I'm going to plug that into the vector, and then I can control shift and click on the Voronoi. Now this one, I want to be a bit smaller because I don't want there to be quite as much cracks. So I'm going to turn the scale down to like a 2.3. And then the scale here on the Voronoi, I'm going to change that to like a two. Now if we added these into the bump right now, those cracks would be really, really thick. So to make those thinner, I'm going to press shift A and search for another color ramp. We'll just drop the color ramp right here. And then I can just take the white tab and drag that really, really close to the black tab and you can see that it's going to make it much more contrasty and it's going to also sharpen up those cracks so the cracks are just really really small all right now I don't want these cracks to be everywhere I just want them to be places here and there so I'm gonna make a mask and then use that mask to tell it that it's only gonna be some spots here and there so I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna search for another noise texture just drop it here and then once again I'm gonna plug the object up to the vector on the noise texture and then I think I'll turn the roughness up to like a 0.52 just so that it has a little bit more roughness. And then because this is a mask, we need it to be very contrasty. So once again, I'm gonna press Shift A and search for a color ramp. We'll just drop the color ramp right here. And then if it wasn't plugged up already, just plug the noise texture factor up to the color ramp. And then you can control Shift and click on the color ramp. So now let's actually flip these because I want to flip the values and then just bring them up really, really close. And you can see now we have a nice mask. So just like that, something like that is really good. So now I want to merge these together, kind of mix them together. And we're going to tell it that where the black values are, that's where the cracks are going to be. So I'm going to press shift A and we're going to search for another mix RGB, drop it down here. And then because this is a mask, we're going to plug the color up to the factor and then just unplug it from color one. And then this one, this one up here with the cracks, we're going to plug that into color one. And then I can control shift and click on the mix RGB. So color two now, that can be fully white. And now you can see that wherever these black areas are, that's where the cracks are going to be. So now we can take this and we can add it into the final material. So where the cracks are, I want to make that darker. So we're going to plug that into the base color. And then also we're going to plug that into the normal. So let's take the bump node and we'll press shift D and add one more bump node right here. And then we can plug the mix right here all the way up to the height. So then I can control shift and click on the final material. And you can see that it's starting to add those cracks in there. Now it's not really strong enough. So I'm going to turn the strength up to like 8.5. So it's halfway. And now you can really start to see those cracks in there. Now to be able to see them even better, we can make the cracks darker. So to do that, I'm going to click on this mix here and I'll press shift D and drop it right down here. And then we can take this mix down here, the mix with the cracks, and we can plug that into the factor of our our new mix. And then this mix right here, this is just the normal color. We can take this and plug this into color two, and then I can control shift and click on this. So now color one, that's going to be the color of the cracks. So I'm just going to make it a dark brown color. And the hex value that I'm going to use for the cracks is going to be 7C 4E 2E. So now if you look at this, you can see the cracks are just a little bit darker colored. And then if I control shift and click on the final material, you're able to see those cracks just a little bit better because they are darker. 
All right, so this is looking really nice. There's just one more thing that I wanna do, and that is I wanna plug the final color up to the roughness to give it some roughness value. Now you can see that when I just plug that up, it looks really, really shiny. It kinda looks wet, and that's not what I want. I want a very dry, cracked ground material. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and again, let's add one more color ramp, and I'll just drop the color ramp right down here, uh, going through the roughness. So now, if I take the black tab, if I turn the color up more and more white, it's going to be more and more more rough so you can see when it's fully white it looks super super rough it almost looks like chalky but when I turn it way down you can see it's looking more shiny and reflective so I do want it to be pretty white um, I do want it to be a light gray not fully white but pretty white because it is a dry dirt ground all right and that is it so that is the finished material let's just look at the final thing that looks really cool we have a lot of nice detail in there and we also have some little bumps and things that look like pebbles and things like that and some nice little cracks and chunks so I'll just render this out and we'll take a look all right there we go so there is the finished material so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching and again if you'd like to help support me and this channel i am trying to make blender content for a living so you can check out my gumroad store in my patreon page where you can get project files procedural materials like this one and other procedural materials artwork project files and 3d models and assets and different things like that on my gumroad and patreon also if you'd like to help support me here on youtube then you can check out the youtube memberships so if you click on the join button next to the subscribe button then it'll show you my memberships and if you join a membership then you'll be helping to support the channel monthly and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube and also another great way to help support the channel would be to purchase my procedural material packs so every time I create 10 procedural materials I throw them together into a procedural material packs so the links will be in the description if you'd like to check out those procedural material packs and I'm creating more and more as I make more procedural materials but again Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you in a future video.